Welcome everybody. So I'm here at Interspeech 2021 and this is a hybrid conference. So we're really on a conference venue and there's approximately 380 people here and 1,800 people online. And I would like to introduce you to Sunghee Kathy Yang, who will accompany me on this conference video. Hello and thank you very much for your nice introduction. My name is Sunghee Yang. Uh, you can call me Kathy. So uh, today, uh, yes, we are in Bruno and it's the first day of Interspeech. Uh, I, just to shortly introduce myself, I uh, have been working with speech recognition synthesis and conversion for the past six years and I received my degree, PhD degree last year and joined FAU uh, in the Department of Artificial Intelligence for Biomedical Engineering, IBA department. Um, uh, I started the position in May as a junior professor and I think it's this is like my sixth interspeech or something like that and it's I just feel very uh, happy to be back and stay tuned <laughs> absolutely so let's see what we can find here on interspeech and I'm very much looking forward to checking out the great science here Yeah, so you can see we're here on a real conference. It has buffet, cake, coffee, so you can really get fresh coffee, cappuccino, everything you like, just in case you forgot how real conferences are supposed to be. And you can get a glimpse here. Um, so, fruits and desserts and a real coffee machine. And you can get real food and real coffee with real people in Interspeech 2021. Yeah, so you can see it's not just real cake and real coffee, but there's also real people. So it's a great pleasure to have Louis and Bosch here. So, Louis, how are you feeling? I'm very, feeling very well. Uh, it's a pleasure to be at Interspeech in person. It is uh, nicer than being online, I guess. Uh, although being online is maybe equally present, but I like the physical presence of people and I like to see the people. So that is an add-on to the conference. So you're running to the next session already. So what's the next session about? What are you going to do? That is about perception. So in Nijmegen we are trying to use ASR to investigate uh, the properties of the speech signal and to investigate how the ASR can explain human perception. Uh, especially concerning uh, what now happens in your head and you are looking for words that I'm speaking right now. Cool. So you, at three times a second your brain is trying to get words from your English lexicon. And so that is a pretty interesting task and many details are still not understood. So we are trying to investigate how people do this. By, and we use ASR to help us in, 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 in explaining the procedures, the, the cognition. And if you're interested in more about this, I'll put a couple of references to the work that was just mentioned in the description of this video, such that you can also check out the signs. Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. So the first day of Interspeech is already over. We saw many more exciting talks and many more exciting signs. So we would like to take one or two minutes now to essentially discuss our highlights of the conference. All of what we are mentioning is available in the online conference system. So if you log in, you can still view the recordings of those talks. So what did you like best? Um, one of the best. Uh, it would be really hard to say what is really the best because there, it was excellent. Um, I, it, I attended so many talks. Um, but uh, I would also uh, really love to highlight um, the survey talk by Heidi Christiansen. And um, the survey talk was titled Towards Automatic Speech Recognition for People with Atypical Speech. So I really, I was really impressed with um, the overview of the um, disruptive speech that she would give uh, um, at, at the beginning. And also I could really relate to um, this topic because it's uh, I, I am working on the related um, projects with biomedical engineering. 
um, so and also I I was working with this speech modification that she was talking about so for example with uh, generative adversary networks um, um, that can really help with the speech recognition of the disarthric speech and I had a couple of papers regarding that so um, I can talk more but we have uh, a session planned with um, Heidi so I think we can have a, go a bit more in depth um, uh, regarding this one. So we actually asked her also to give an invited yes. talk at our lab and if you don't have access to the interspeech then very soon we will have her also as an online virtual talk and we will also record it and try to make it available. So it's a really cool talk. Yes, yes. yes. Anything else you want to mention? Um, Oh yes, so uh, I went to the perception um, session um, in the afternoon after the lunch, uh, and it was it was uh, so there was this very um, in impressive talk by um, Louise, um, and then there were actually three series of presentations by him. It was very totally impressive. So so there was the so the it it began with the. Diana, Diana network that was um, trying to model the human word comprehension. Um, it's uh, it's so basically. Um, I mean, we he himself gave the <laughs> the uh, overview already, so I can we, we, um, you can go back if you're interested. And it's about the act um, activation and decision and execution model. Um, for the word comprehension, and there were very interesting Q and A session also about the how if if it can also model human prosody, which can which which was really mind boggling. And then there were other um, yeah um, time to event models for analyzing reaction time sequences and models of reduction time in auditory and lexical decision with um, the RT onset and. Um, RT offset. So, yeah. So, yeah. This is really like a talk that you want to listen to. I think. I mean, if we've just seen uh, Louis here, and he yes. gave already a very good summary yes. of what he's presenting about. But still, that he had like three talks in succession, and yes. yeah, they were all amazing. So, if you have some time, I definitely recommend to have a look yes. at the speech perception session. Yes. So, I, I really, what I really liked about the uh, the session was, um, I mean, it's besides the technological or technical aspects, you're really trying to get into the the. You understand the how speech recognition works in the brain, and that's um, which is really scientifically interesting. And this leads to the another talk that you you can talk about with the EEG signals. Uh, absolutely, yeah. there was also a very exciting talk in the same session uh, that was given by Mohammed uh, Jalipur Monesi. And he was interested in extracting different levels of speech information from EEG and he's using an LSTM based model. So essentially the question that he's been looking at is whether you can classify based on the EEG recording which word has just been uttered and so at the same time they're listening to words and he's classifying whether this is the correct correspondence. So this is nice and I think it could be a really valuable tool to build new intelligibility tests. So for example, you could use that in order to see whether the processing in the brain is somehow affected if you play back. And it can be done without the support of the person because you just need to set up essentially the EEGs and then you play back the respective stimuli and you can check whether there is something wrong with the processing and maybe also these techniques will give us a better understanding of the human brain and the speech processing in the human brain. So that was exciting. I must admit that I also liked a lot the keynote by Herman Nye. Of course. So he had this wonderful summary of 40 years of speech and language processing. And it was really nice to see how he put all of this in context and went down essentially to base decision rule and could then also link all the modern concepts that we now see in deep learning and so on 
that they essentially still re relate to the classical theory like HNM. and yeah so the, the the hmms the deep learning and how you relate all of this in a statistical yes. modeling sense so that was really nice it was a bit mathy but i must admit i really like the presentation yes. so if you have time to see that it's also something that i can definitely recommend what I found really cool is was also the session on representation learning. Oh yes. So th there were we different. Cannot miss this one. Yeah. yeah, there was representation, and I particularly liked the presentation by Chao Lu. So it was entitled "Leveraging Speaker Attribute Information Using Multitask Learning for Speaker Verification and Diarization And he had this very nice idea that you would not just just build the standard um, embeddings but you would adjust the embedding in a way that it would also represent different properties of the speakers like gender age and all the other properties that we know about those speakers mm -hmm. and put this into a multitask learning context so it's not just the embedding that is learned for general uh, verification and diarization but also representing these different properties so i thought that's a really cool yeah, idea it was so, like really creative i have not seen such work so far so so if you have time, uh, then uh, yeah. have a look at this presentation. Yes, it's cool. Definitely. And he already uh, uploaded the paper to archive. So I'll also put the, the link into the description of this video. I'll also put all the titles and so on in the description of the video such that you can check out the conference platform. Yeah. Another thing that I totally enjoyed <laughs> was a presentation by uh, Rob Van Son, and it was entitled Measuring Voice oh, Quality yes. Parameters After Speaker Pseudonymization. And, you know, we work a lot in, in medical and um, also medical speech processing and, and pathology and their data scarcity is a huge issue. And of course, you would like to share that data, but there's huge ethical constraints to sharing that. So Rob was looking into pseudonymization for this purpose. There's actually already been challenging uh, challenges that have been going on in this direction, how this can be done. But he was not just interested in the pseudonymization itself and whether the persons can be re-identified and obviously the pseudonymization works so you can make the voice sound like a different voice such that you wouldn't be able to recognize the person again but the question that he was asking is whether this has any implications on the voice quality parameters that are then extracted from such a pseudonymized voice and i can already tell you that the results are very interesting so most of the voice quality was preserved after the pseudonymization. So that's actually a quite nice result. So we can also essentially pseudonymize the voice. So you don't recognize the speaker again, but you can still extract the pathological parameters. There are a couple of caveats that you can also see in the presentation. It's very well outlined and he is discussing all of that. And I thought it was a very important research to look into the voice quality parameters and how different levels of voice quality can interact with the pseudonymization. So that was super cool and these were essentially my highlights. But of course there were also more highlights, right? <laughs> like, um, yes, of course. So there was, of course, this, uh, interspeech I think always comes with very nice uh, music. It starts, that uh, started off with the opening ceremony. And um, yeah, so there was some, um, this uh, violin and piano du um, duet, and uh, yes, it was it was really really lovely to listen to it live. <laughs> yeah, live music. That's, yes. that's So I think it was a great choice that they really went for this hybrid event that yes. you can see people again. So they actually had to award essentially two years of awards because last year was online only. So there was a very long list of. You know, ISCA fellows and then the different awards that have been yes. uh, named there because they couldn't hand them over in present. Of course, so yeah. So they still nice. have the medals, and you know, um, and I look forward to um, maybe next year it will be like really, um, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. still some people couldn't attend yeah. the award ceremony. Yes. So <laughs> even they had problems that they couldn't produce new ISCA medals anymore because the yeah. company that is manufacturing <laughs> that the, was, the yeah. metals itself went out of yeah. business. Yeah. But even this problem could be solved. So that, that was uh, quite a few things that were mentioned there in this yes. uh, opening ceremony. Yes. So we're, but we're making the progress. Yeah. Like, really. yeah. um, what did you think about the, the dinner? 
and the, the um, food here in the country. Oh yes, um, um, we were talking about the food, um, and it is the catering is excellent here, um, and uh, which is. Uh, yeah, I'm um, actually to um, yeah. It's it's constantly changing the the, the variety of <laughs> the, the foods and the yeah. It's 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 really nice. Um, Absolutely, and yeah. then there was this wonderful welcome reception with you know meeting all your uh, your friends and yeah, colleagues yes, and so on. It yes, was really yeah, great. I was so. I was really pleasantly surprised to talk to some of the people um, yeah <laughs> I, I did not I did not know who was coming and but I was I had some anticipation and, and you know, it's really yeah, nice. so, so we tried to uh, ask some people for interviews so maybe we can show that in the second video on, on day two and yeah this already concludes our day one summary of <laughs> interspeech 2021 yes. yes so I hope you like the summary if you like it share it and maybe you can have a chance to listen to some of these presentations in the online video system. So thank you very much for watching and see you with the day two summary, hopefully tomorrow. Bye bye.